Welcome back! Hello again my friends, it's all kicking off! First off, the Zero Hour quest. Out of nowhere, Bungie drops what is arguably the best exotic quest in the game at the tail end of Season 6. A quest that introduces one of Destiny's most terrifying enemies. His name? Well, it's... it's Trevor. You'll never escape me, you bastard! Next up, Season 7. For the first time in Destiny's history, the new raid, Crown of Sorrow, will launch on Day 1. Yeah, let me just repeat that. Day 1. Oh yeah, and by the way, also for Season 7, Bungie's nerfing, well, it's pretty much nerfing effing everything. Including player favourites, Whisper, Sleeper, Ace of Spades, my beloved Orpheus Rig, how could you? And PvP beast, Luna's How. Bungie, you monster. <laughs> And yeah, I've still yet to get that effing chicken dinner emote, so I'll be opening another batch of Notorious Engrams in the hope of bagging the damn thing before Season 6 comes to an end and it's lost forever. <laughs> Okay then, so let's start with the Zero Hour quest. Talk about saving the best for last. Now, after a rather lackluster offering from Season 6 that according to Bungie's content schedule ended with a revelry, players were more than ready to move on to Season 7. And then BAM! Out of nowhere like a Randy Orton RKO, Bungie drops the mother of all exotic quests, with enough content to keep players busy right up until the start of Season 7. Now, personally, Zero Hour is one of my favourite content drops in Destiny 2. And Bungie the Mad Lads even managed to finally make use of that weird basement area on the farm. Now, ever since Destiny 2 launched two years ago, I've been curious as to what the point of this little cubby hole was. Well, now we know. It's where the Zero Hour quest kicks off. It's where you meet up with Mithrax, a fallen captain ally, who takes you back to the wreckage of the old tower. Now, your mission is to chase down the scum who have stolen Siva Tech from the Cryptarch's vault deep inside the tower. It's an awesome bit of storytelling that rewards you with an awesome bit of kit. The exotic Pulse Rifle Outbreak Perfected, an augmented version of Outbreak Prime, which players were first introduced to back in Rise of Iron. And here we are inside the Cryptarch's vault, and as you can see, the weapon has been swiped. The casing it was stored in surgically cut away to gain access to the loot inside. A nice bit of visual storytelling. I mean, this mission has it all. A nostalgic return to the old tower, a vertigo-inducing shortcut for anyone who's in a bit of a hurry. Just make sure that you stick the landing. Vent shooting shenanigans, you show those vents who's boss. Slice and dice, fan action, pro tip, if you value your genitals, don't touch the blades. Switches to help out your slow ass teammates. Trevor's terrifying death maze of death, expect to die because Trevor actually hates you. It's true, I effing hate you. Oh, hello, what have we got here? Another cheeky little jump. Don't mind if I do, just stay in the middle and you should be okay. Splat, alright, nice. A super secret door and hidden passageway combo that leads to the Cryptarch's vault. Plinths. Lots of plinths. Plinth. And finally, a big old boss called Cyrix. Once you defeat him, you're rewarded with a weapon that this fallen bandit himself was trying to steal. Marvellous. And you know what? It doesn't end there. You see, once you complete the Zero Hour quest, you unlock the heroic version, which has a few more tricks up its sleeve. The first thing you'll notice is a slightly higher power level, increased from 690 to 700. The heroic version also has an alternative route, which forces you through a precarious jumping section. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot this section now burns you to death if you step on the wrong floor panel, so, you know, tread carefully. Now, if you successfully complete the heroic Zero Hour quest, you're awarded with the Outbreak Perfected Catalyst. Now, as you can see, in order to unlock the Catalyst, which increases the lethality of this weapon's nanites, you need to notch up a whole heap of precision kills and collect 500 SIVA particulates. How do you get these particulates? Well, there are two sources that provide this material. Well, first up, you get 100 SIVA particulates from defeating the heroic version of Cyrix. 
boss. It's worth noting that you can't farm this boss for this material, you're limited to 100 per Risa. The second source is a little bit more complicated. You'll need to collect key cards that are hidden throughout the quest. To kick off this key card hunt, you'll need to pick up this special little device. Now, once you have this device, you then need to locate all three key cards. Collecting them gives you access to a number puzzle inside the Cryptarch's vault. Yeah, I know, what better way to round off a timed quest than having to decipher a painfully long number puzzle? If like me, you're thick as pigs will, make some friends with clever people. So yeah, upon completing the puzzle, you get 67 particulates. And if this was your first completion, you also get a ship schematic. Again, it's worth noting that you can only gain 67 particulates from this puzzle per reset. So then, the quickest way to collect 500 particulates is to defeat the boss and complete the keycard puzzle every reset. Do this and you can unlock the catalyst in three weeks. Or if you just want to defeat the boss and have absolutely no interest in the keycard puzzle, it's going to take you five weeks. So what about the ship schematic? Well, to repair the ship, you'll need to complete three keycard puzzle runs, one per reset. And your reward for doing this? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, it's a ship. An exotic ship called Scrap. And I gotta say, he's an odd looking little fella. And here he is in all his glory, Scrap. Refurbished salvage recovered from the ruins of the original tower. He kind of reminds me of Johnny Five from Short Circuit, if you remember that film from the 80s. Okay, let's have a little tiny montage of this dude. Shut the fuck up, my name's Scrap I'll be chilling in the tower bin with all the other wreck trash So yeah, my mixtape is dropping 2080. It's gonna be straight fire, so don't miss it. But I digress. There's a special triumph for all you speed running enthusiasts. You get a unique emblem if you complete any zero hour run with five minutes left on the clock. So then what about the outbreak perfected catalyst? Is it actually any good? Well, it increases nanite damage and enemies that die with nanites attached to them generate additional nanites. So let's put this thing to the test. Now, I've gotta say, I just really like this weapon. The way it looks, the way it sounds. If you score precision kills, swarms of vicious red fireflies appear and attack any nearby enemies. I mean, what's not to like about it? And with the catalyst activated, those vicious little fireflies are even more nasty. It's fun seeing just how much damage you can do with one precision kill. And the catalyst has this nice little domino effect. Enemies that die with nanites attached to them generate more nanites. Okay, I'm gonna stop yapping and let you enjoy how this thing sounds when it's racking up the kills. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Zero Hour quest. Now, before we move on to Season 7, I want to talk about the last two Invitations of the Nine from Season 6. In Week 8, Bungie dropped yet another reference to those mysterious pyramid ships. And then in Week 9, the final Invitation teases yet another reference to those effing ships. Okay, Bungo, message received loud and clear. My guess is that future content will finally pay off these teases, perhaps Destiny 3, perhaps sooner. Okay, now let's move on to Season 7, which drops June 4th. And you know what else drops June 4th? The new raid. Yep, that's right. For the first time in Destiny's history, the new raid drops on day one. The name of the raid is Crown of Sorrow, and it goes live 4 p.m. Pacific time. The recommended power level is 715. Now, here are some things worth noting. Last Wish and Scourge of the Past will be unavailable until Crown of Sorrow has been beaten. This prevents players with a stash of ethereal keys from gaining an advantage. Bungie is also nerfing the drop rate of Prime Engrams for the first 24 hours hours of Season 7. Only two per character. Again, this is to stop players farming these engrams to help boost their power level for the raid, so yeah, good luck. And that's not the only thing Bungie is nerfing in Season 7. The Season of Opulence is going on a right old nerf spree. Why? Well, here's Bungie's explanation. For Season of Opulence, several notable weapons are being adjusted. We want to ensure that encounters, raids, and other endgame content, for example, remain a challenge. Some of Destiny's weapons have been overwhelming that challenge. Our first choice is to buff underused weapons, but if we continue to push 
every weapon up higher and higher, it will be impossible to maintain challenging experiences. In short, certain weapons are so damn OP, they make end game content too easy, and so Bungie is nerfing them. So what exactly is being a nerf? First on the chopping block, Whisper of Worms, it's basically being castrated. The white nail perk will no longer magically generate ammo, instead it'll take it from your existing ammo. No more infinite ammo. Next up, Sleeper Simulant. This weapon's bounce damage is being reduced on all bosses. That's right, the Sleeper's famed boss melting ability is being Thanos snapped out of existence. Laters, mate. Hello, who's this then? That's right, it's Lord of Wolves. PvE damage is to be reduced by 20%. Thought Ace of Spades was safe? Think again, chump. Memento Mori now ends if you stow the weapon. Also, Titans with one-eyed mask equipped won't be able to two-tap Guardians with this weapon while Vengeance is active. Good. Next up, we're going to look at some of the exotic armor being nerfed. Skull of Diam, Kara, Phoenix Protocol, and my beloved Orpheus Rig now receive less super energy, making it much harder to get a full super back. Now, as a huge Orpheus Rig enthusiast, it's this nerf that saddens me the most. I love feeling like a one-man army ensnaring fall after fall in my purple webs of death. But alas, those days are soon coming to an end. R.I.P. And get this, Shards of Galena is getting yet another nerf. Its super gain is being reduced yet again. So basically, this exotic is about as useful as tits on a fish. So yeah, I'm just gonna pop Shards right in the bin where it belongs and set it on fire, cause it's shite. So yeah, another one bites the dust. Shards down, Orpheus rig a shadow of its former self. I just hope that the exotics coming in Season 7 are gonna get me excited. I, I hope so. And my boys, we ain't done yet. Luna's Hal and Not Forgotten are also facing Bungie's relentless nerf fest. Both weapons will have their rate of fire reduced from 180 to 150, greatly lowering their time to kill. And these weapons' unique perk, Magnificent Hal, is also being nerfed. In Season 7, Magnificent Hal will only boost body shot damage. In other words, the optimal time to kill with these guns will now be two headshots and a body shot finisher. So yeah, season seven, the season of the nerf. Leave your thoughts below. And here's a few more little tidbits of info for season seven before we move on. As you can see, season of opulence will have a brand new six player match made activity. Now community manager Cosmo has confirmed you'll be able to launch this new activity from orbit. And you'll be pleased to know that we'll also be getting a whole heap of new catalysts to grind for, including Cerberus, Malfeasance, Trinity Ghoul, Lord of Wolves, Wave Splitter, 1000 Voices, Queen Breaker, Two-Tailed Fox, and Black Talon. And last, it's now time for my favourite part of the video, time to get me some sweet precious loot. Now guys, I have still yet to get that effing chicken dinner emote, and I want to get it before Season 6 comes to an end, and as you can see, yes, I actually have some jubilant engrams left over from the Reverie, so I'm going to open these alongside some notorious engrams. <laughs> Okay, now surely we're gonna get that damn chicken dinner emo on this run. Okay, let's do it. It's gonna be done. I, I just got a feeling in my bones. Okay, we've got some jubilant engrams, like I said, so let's burn through those. But we, we've got to get it. Okay, I thought that was it. It's not. More jubilant engrams. Let's see what we get. We've got the ricochet dance. Okay, come on. We've got to get that chicken dinner emo. It has to be done. Now, I've actually got some more of these in my postmaster. So if we don't get it on this run, I'm gonna hop back to the postmaster, fill up, and get some more of these damn things. Okay, jubilant engram, that's not going to drop the trick chicken dinner emote. Come on, surely now, surely effing now, effing you. Let's go back to the postmaster. Okay, now guys, before I collect these engrams, I just want to show you something. Some of you guys have been like, more console, I reckon you actually do have the chicken dinner emote and you're stringing us along, you piece of shit. Well, guys, I just want to show you, as you can see, I don't have the chicken dinner emote. It's legit. I've just been really goddamn unlucky. So let me just go back to the postmaster. Let's just collect as many of these as we can. We're just going to open these. No, I'm not going to do the exotic just yet because I don't need anything from it on my hunter. So let's just get these and now let's go and hopefully get that damn chicken dinner emo because it's ridiculous. See, if season six finishes without me getting it, I'll do a little cry. Here we go. A booyaxi to the shaxi. We got a jubilant. Let's to hopefully get the chicken dinner emote. <laughs> Am I the unluckiest person alive when it comes to this particular effing emote? There, there we go. <laughs> oh my days, fam. We finally effing got it. We finally effing got it. Jesus. It only took 60,000 centuries, but we did it. So we can put that one to rest. 
Oh my god, we might as well open the rest of these because why the hell not? But we finally got that goddamn chicken dinner emote. <laughs> Effing few. Now, guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is actually the longest I've ever spent editing a video. I think it took about, like, four solid days of editing to get this mofo done and dusted. Now, I'd love to mark this occasion with a channel record that you guys can help me with. Can we perhaps get this video to 25,000 likes? I've never done it before on this channel, and I'd feel super proud and grateful if you guys could help me make it happen. Either way, I'm just happy you watched the video and made it this far. Now, guys, if you haven't already done so now's a great time to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because season 7 is almost upon us and i'm going to be making regular content once again hoorah thank you so much again my friends and we'll speak again very soon